Well, good afternoon, everybody. You enjoying this beautiful day? I'm ready for some warmer temperatures, though. I could use some, some more sunshine and some warmer temperatures. But thank you for being, being here today. And those of you who are watching online, we appreciate you tuning in as well. As you know, we, for the month of March, we've been focusing on the natural side of healing. Uh, Pastor Jerome always says there's a natural side and there's a spiritual side. And we spent a lot of time talking about the spiritual side here at Seeds of Greatness, but we wanted to take some time and deal with the natural side of healing. So for this month, we've been bringing in uh, healthcare professionals from our church and from the community to discuss various topics. So for the first week, we did um, hypertension and diabetes with uh, uh, Honey Bowick, who's a registered nurse. And then last week, we covered strokes with Jasmine Conway, and Jasmine is a physician's assistant. Today, we're gonna talk about prostate cancer and colorectal cancer, and we have nurse Freddie Pierre with us, and we are so glad to have her with us. She has been a nurse, she's an oncology nurse, and has been a nurse for over two decades, over two decades. She worked um, almost 17 years for Christiana Care, and now she's working for uh, University of Pennsylvania, Penn Health. So we are absolutely thrilled to have you. Um, I know you have a wealth of knowledge on the inside of you. I think you said we'll start with prostate cancer, right? Yes. It's prostate cancer. So I'm going to let you go ahead and start, and you can uh, talk to our online audience and those who are in the house. I may interject from time to time if I feel like we want to clarify something or if a question comes to my mind. For those of you who are in the audience, at the end, if you have a question, um, we'll take your questions. You step up to the mic and we'll take your questions at that time. Okay, Nurse Freddie. Thank you, First Lady Lisa. It is an honor and privilege to be here. I don't take it for granted. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks everybody for being here and for the people watching us online, thank you so much. Uh, like uh, First Lady Lisa said, I am not a doctor. I am an oncology nurse. I love what I do. Nursing is not a job for me, it's my passion. So today we're gonna talk about prostate cancer and colorectal cancer. And as well, most of us probably do not know, March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. I did and not know that. Yes. I, saw, I was doing some research last night and I saw that online. So how, how good is God on that? How does pick the month that you know, is being recognized in our community? And most people usually say colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer, most of us talk about colon cancer. So we're gonna talk about prostate cancer first. What is prostate cancer? If you're a man, you do have a prostate, because every man has prostate. So prostate cancer is, um, we do the prostate. Prostate is like, it's like a small walnut-shaped gland in the male that produces the seminal fluid that nourish and transport the sperm. So it's what really transport the sperm. However, people usually said, how do I know if I do have um, prostate cancer? So why I'm here today, if you don't remember anything, I'm asking you, please, the message is to take home to your loved one. We must do our screening. Because as we speak right now, the healthcare people, they do not know why African Americans are so much high and to have prostate cancer because of African-American um, prostate cancer, the incidents happen so many times in young um, African-American and also Hispanic. So the American Cancer Society changed the guidelines. Now it used to be you have to be 50 years old, so to have, um, a, to go to your doctor and say, oh, I would like to get screened, for prostate cancer. Now they changed the guideline to 45 years old. Wow. As I'm speaking to you, I had a patient right now, he's only 38 years old, and he has prostate cancer. But the good news is they caught it early. Nurse Freddie, let me interject there. Um, 28 years old, diagnosed with prostate. 38, I'm sorry. 38, yes. 38 years old, diagnosed with prostate cancer. How did he know that he needed to be checked out when the medical profession says it's 45. 
So he must have been maybe exhibiting some symptoms? Exactly. Okay. He was exhibiting some symptom, and uh, he had uh, abdominal pain and uh, also back pain. So thank God, his wife, he listened to his wife and he went to see. He listened to his wife. Wow. Yes. That's he amazing. Because most men don't. Yes. I have five older brothers. Yes. So he listened to his, to his wife and he went to see his doctor. And testing and testing, they find out and he has prostate cancer. So what we need to know, we need to know the symptom, the symptom of prostate cancer. So you know when a man uh, go to the bathroom to pee, and if you have seen little boy, when they peeing, it's like a, it's a straight shot. Like men with prostate cancer, they start peeing and then stop, 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 stop. Now some people don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. If they like in the fifties, they probably say, "Oh, I'm old," you know. But it is a sign. That doesn't mean you have prostate cancer, but it's a sign. So if it's not coming out in a steady stream, yes. that's something that the men should be aware of. Exactly. It shouldn't drip out. Yes. It should be a steady stream of yes. urine. Okay. And also blood and or urine. Like if you pee, you see blood, that's not a good sign. It is, you need to check it out. Mm -hmm. um, remember I tell you the young man had Back pain, pain. Mm -hmm. also pain in our back, pain anywhere that you never had before. It's not normal. You need to check it out. Um, losing weight. If you just lose weight, just we all want to lose weight. But if you just happen to just lose weight and you don't, you're not on any diet, and then you just start losing weight, that is a sign also, unfortunately. Um, erectile dysfunction for the married men. If your wife said things different, you need to pay attention. That is a sign. So erectile, erectile dysfunction is a sign, a symptom, could be a it's symptom of prostate no, cancer. No, it is a symptom of prostate cancer. Okay, it is a symptom of prostate yes. cancer. But I guess I said it could be because people could have erectile dysfunction and not have prostate cancer. Exactly. So I don't want anybody who has prostate uh, who has erectile dysfunction automatically think they have prostate cancer it could be something else but you said listen to your wife if she says something's a little different exactly and like I said um, African-American I do not want to just say African-American black people because I'm from Haiti but black people African-American people from the Caribbean um, Hispanic African African we are at higher risk. And but but it's affecting know. every ethnicity. It's it not, affected so every we're, talk, we're talking to everybody, not we're just. We're talking to everybody, but mm -hmm. our numbers are higher. Mm -hmm. uh, and then another thing they find out, people, if you have breast cancer and then you're a woman and, uh, and you have breast cancer in your family and we do know about the genetic testing and if you do the genetic testing and they tell you, you BRCA1 or BRCA2, it is something that now they find out the women that, were, that had breast cancer and they did the genetic testing and now they positive for BRCA or BRCA2, now the risk for family, for men in the family for prostate cancer is higher. Does, did that make it clear? That's, that's really interesting to me. So if you have, I had breast cancer. I did not do the genetic testing, no. But if I had done the genetic testing and it came up with one of those that you're saying the men in my lineage are more likely to have breast, uh, prostate cancer. Yes. There's a connection. Yes. There. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there's a connection. Um, so now, how do we test it for prostate cancer? So we do what's called PSA. Uh, the PSA, PSA stands for prostate specific antigen. The normal range for a PSA is 1.0 and 1.5 ng/ml. Now, 
That's the normal range for PSC. Research and the scientists said anybody with a PSC score greater than 2.5, it is abnormal. You need to, if you go to your physician and then they, because by the way, the PSC, it is a blood test. So then you go, they send you to lab corp to have the PSC level done. So then you, the test come back, the PSC level come back 1.8. That doesn't mean you have prostate cancer. It's just abnormal. So they, there's gonna be more testing done. They're gonna wanna do an MRI done for you. As we speak right now, in the state of Delaware, there are only five places where you can have an MRI for prostate. Now imagine how many people living in Delaware. And I'm talking from Northern Delaware and Southern Delaware. And the numbers I gave you, they, not, they didn't come from me. I am a member of the Delaware Prostate Coalition. It just happened this morning, we had our meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, a radiologist, a retired radiologist, when he said, when he told us those number five places, this is me, I was like, I could not believe it. I, so I'm only, like, only five places in the entire state yes. where uh, a man can get an MRI of his prostate. And so, if, so if the doctor says you need one today, you, he tells you today, you gotta find a place because the worst thing in the world is to have to wait for the test to be done the ble and wait for the results. <laughs> yeah, but the blessing for us in Northern Delaware, we have Christian care not too far from us and you will get one done. Now imagine the people that live in Lower Delaware, in Southern Delaware. Mm -hmm. For some unknown reason, I'm, I always, shooting for the underdog. I always think about the people that less fortunate. Yeah. We have Christiana Care right here. We call Bloom. And then if you, I mean, there's a, some, there's a saying, it's who you know. It's, how much, it's not how much you know, it's who you know. You call somebody from Christiana Care, you would get one done. Mm -hmm. So that's very, 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 very important. That's very, very important. Good. Very good. And another thing I would like to bring out too, um, we talk about it in the meeting today, this morning. The state of Delaware, it's one of the best states that you could live. We have what called screening for life. They dare to help you. As we speak right now, there is the bill called 302, which is our area code. You're not gonna forget it, 302. So uh, in October, when our legislator gonna be sitting there to vote, this bill, I hope and pray it will pass because this is what this bill is gonna do. Remember, 302. This bill will gonna require insurance company in the state of Delaware to pay for the PSA level for everyone li who lives in Delaware and everyone who work for the state of Delaware. Like if you live in Maryland, and, but you work in Delaware, so you have your medical insurance in Delaware, you would, that's gonna be in your favor because they're gonna make sure that the insurance company, because insurance company don't want to pay for everything. Sometimes you have to fight. You have to be your own advocate because if you don't, nobody, I'm telling you, nobody, because most of us in the church, most of us watching, our last name is not Rockefeller. So you have to fight for your, you know, you go to your doctor, you think that you need something and your doctor say, oh, you fired that doctor, you go to the next one. Remember, they work for us. And sometimes people forget that, you know? People for, forget that. Mm -hmm. So as we speak about, like we talk about the PSA level again, remember the numbers, 1.0 to 1.5, NG slash ML, don't ask me what it mean, but that's the number, remember the number, is normal. Anything greater than 2.5 is abnormal. So there is a, a little part in there between, one, so 1 1.6 to 2.5 is, is still not cancerous, right? Yes. Uh, how often should men receive or get screened uh, for prostate cancer? Is that annually? 
Um, should it be every year, every two years? How often should that happen? Annually. That's Annual. what we're doing now. We're doing the annually. Annually. Yes. So men should get an annual, uh, get blood work done annually to, to screen for prostate, for prostate cancer. Yes. And you should know what your number is. Like we know what our cholesterol numbers are. We know what our blood pressure numbers are. Guys should know what their prostate numbers are and not stay away from the screenings because you're afraid. Yes. Right? Mm. I, mean, I know a lot of times, even with women, sometimes we don't, like a mammogram, you've heard horrible things about mammograms, they're painful, they're this, they're that. Um, they just don't want to do it. But you just go ahead and do it because it's the right thing. I've, I've heard um, the, the exam, the prostate exam itself, is not a pleasant exam for a man to go through, but it's necessary. Yes. Just like our mammograms are not pleasant, the prostate exam is not pleasant, but necessary. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I just want to read, I love statistic. So the American Cancer Society estimates for prostate cancer in the United States for 2024, about 299,000 new cases of prostate cancer and about 35,250 of them will die of prostate cancer. So what that tells you, it is important to have your screening done. And remember, the patient that I'm talking about is only 38 years old. 38 years old. 38 years old. Mm -hmm. So everything I said, yes, I am an oncology nurse, but I'm not a physician. Everything that I have, here, and I did talk to First Lady Lisa before we, everything come from the CDC.gov, CDC.gov, which stands for Center Disease. <clears throat> so we need to go to CDC, do not Google anything, because anybody can put something on Google. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so every information I'm giving you, the statistic coming from the American Cancer Society, the information came, came from the CDC, and healthy, Delaware.org. Healthy, just like the word healthy, Delaware.org. Sure. Do not Google. Like I said, anybody can put something on Google. It is very important we know where we're getting all resources. That's right, that's right. That's very good, because a lot of times we think Google's our friend, and it just scares you silly you know, and you'd be thinking you have something you might not even have or it's worse than it really is. Um, I've heard, um, I've heard wives say that they recognize, and you, you talked about it briefly in terms of erectile dysfunction, noticing something sexually is, is off, um, or there are other symptoms like, is there symptoms like, like frequent urination or inability to, Empty your bladder, are yes. they also signs yes. of prostate cancer? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you expound on that a little bit? A wife so might, no, uh, let me finish. A wife might notice her husband getting up two or three times to go to the bathroom during the night. Yeah. That so could be something. <laughs> yeah. So especially if somebody diabetic, uh, we're not talking about diabetes because um, honey did a great job. So sometimes because somebody might be diabetic and then they're getting up and pee so often and then people may not pick, the wife may not pick that up, like why she's pee, he's going to the bathroom. But all the symptoms that I mentioned, like um, the ec dysfunction, erectile dysfunction, the, the stream of the urine, uh -huh blood in, in the urine, going to pee more often, or um, um, the back pain, the bone pain, they all symptom. But again, like you mentioned, that doesn't mean they, the person has prostate, prostate yes. but we need to look into them. It's just like, you know, when you have a fever, fever is not a disease. It's your body telling you, hey, something symptom. is not right. It's a symptom, yeah. It's a symptom, you well, know. Well, just real quick before we switch over to colorectal cancer, um, there's uh, a condition that men also get called an enlarged prostate. Yes. And do some of those symptoms mimic prostate cancer? And the other question is, if someone has an enlarged prostate, doesn't mean they have prostate cancer, right? No. So the symptoms stay the same. However, an enlarged prostate 
doesn't mean like you have prostate cancer. And a lot of time it's, you, you would hear people say, doctors said BPH, you know, B9. Mm -hmm. It is B9, which everybody would like to hear the word B9. But again, we must check because that's the only way they're gonna know. You know, and one other thing, um, First Lady Lisa, people don't talk about, you always hear people said, oh, one in eight women it, it would be diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. One in eight men wow. will be diagnosed with prostate cancer wow. in their lifetime. Wow. You hear that a lot with women, but you don't hear that. You're right, yes. as much. I did not know yes. the statistic was yes. that high. Mm -hmm. um, when I, I just did a little, because I've heard several people who had enlarged prostate and um, there is a procedure that they do for an enlarged prostate, and you're the nurse, not me, but a prosthetic, prosthetic artery embolism, embolization, right? Yes. And they go in and they burn off, is that what they do to burn off some of the blood vessels e that feed the prostate so it doesn't get larger? Yes. You, you would hear a lot of men tell you they had that done. Uh -huh. Some of them, if, like, if they open to you, they will tell you that mm -hmm. this was done. However, um, I, a physician would be more to tell you in details what exactly what they do, mm -hmm. but I do know that's one of the things they do. You know, but for I the enlarged prostate. For the enlarged prostate. Which is not necessarily cancerous. cancerous. So you hear that, I, I hear that a lot about enlarged prostate, but I guess I wanted to, it to be clear that because you have an enlarged prostate doesn't mean you have prostate cancer. Exactly. Most of the time it's benign, yes. which means it's not cancerous. Yes. That's really good, really good. Do you have anything else on prostate cancer that you want to share before we switch over? I, to just, I just want the take home message is remember you, you do, you're not too young to have it. You're not too young because this young man, you know, didn't think, you know, so no, nobody, we're not too young. So we need to be aware, you, you know, that's why we have insurance, yeah. you know. Right, right. I mean, utilize it, you right. know, don't just like, you don't just, you know, insurance is not a gym membership. Mm -hmm. We just have it there and then the first January, February, we go to the gym and we stop. You, you need to use your insurance year long, yeah, very that's important. Good. That's good. Um, my brother-in-law was here a few weeks ago and he, uh, gave a testimony. He just he just went through treatment for prostate cancer, and um, he really his message was to the men to get the screenings done. Mm -hmm. They were he was fortunate to catch it in an early stage, and but he went through and he he wouldn't he said it publicly he wouldn't mind me talking about it because his goal is to inform men um, to get the screening, but he went through the radiation treatment. I think he had to have like 25 sessions of radiation treatment. Um, they, they didn't want to remove his prostate or anything like that, but there are different treatments for uh, prostate cancer. It doesn't mean that if you have prostate cancer, you're gonna lose your prostate. They have to take it out. That's not always the case. We are not giving medical advice. I wanna put that disclaimer out there, but just to make that clear, because sometimes people are nervous or scared about going for the screenings because they don't wanna hear, you know, I'm gonna take it out. It's like if a woman has breast cancer, it's not automatic that she's, they're gonna do a mastectomy, okay? There are other things they could do, like I didn't have to have a mastectomy um, when I had breast cancer. I had a lumpectomy where they went in and re removed the lump and some of the surrounding tissue. I didn't have to, but there are other women that did have to do that, but the end result is you still get the end result and you're still here, which, exactly. is, which is something to be thankful for. I know I'm thankful every day, um, but just because you hear the word cancer doesn't mean you're gonna lose that organ or that body, bodily part. There are treatments out there, um, different kinds of treatment. Yeah, so before we switch to colorectal cancer, one of the things, if people have the physical um, annually, like you go see your doctor annually, they do what do, the, your physician will do the, what's called the finger. Like as the Plastic Coalition, we have that um, advertised, like don't, don't be afraid of the finger. Mm -hmm. So when they check, check, the, check in the, your rectum, they can feel the size 
of your prostate, and mm -hmm. that's usually very that you that's important mm -hmm. by so by even by starting getting a physical annually. Mm -hmm. That's a good. That's a beginning. That's because a that that exam is uh, an exam where the doctor would insert his finger into yes. the rectum. Yes. Right. And you're saying don't be afraid of the finger. Exactly. Again, something that's uncomfortable. We don't want to talk about it. But that's why people are dying, because we don't want to talk about it. Let's put it out there. It's necessary. To live is necessary. I, I hate seeing wives left as widows, finding out their husband was so sick. And it, I'm telling you, I know people in ministry that did not tell their spouse until they like had a month or two to live, because they thought they could handle it. Let's put it out there. Yes. And let's get screened and treatment. Yes. yes. So we can live long and strong with nothing yes. wrong. Yes. Right? And look yes. good doing it. Yes. Let's talk about it. Yes. Yeah, it's not comfortable. Yes. Having somebody's finger go in your rectum. It's not comfortable having your breast smashed on a mammogram mm -hmm. machine. But we find out what's going on in our bodies that way. Exactly. I'm going to say it just yes. like it is. That's yes. what happens. Yes. All right? Yes. Thank you, First Lady. Thank you. Colon cancer. So Colorectal colon. cancer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you hear people talk about, uh, again, uh, March is uh, um, Colorectal Awareness Month. So I believe the color is like a blue. Like, mm. um, so colorectal cancer is uh, one of the cancer I was telling First Lady. We have 90% chance of survival. That's wow, that's huge. <laughs> That is huge. However, we must do our screening. So what is colon cancer? Colon cancer, you know, it's polyps. You have polyps. That doesn't mean you have cancer. So the polyps, when you go to the doctor and then they want you to have that test done, they said, oh, I heard a, one patient told me, Nurse Freddy, I have 28 polyps. I'm like, what? But thank God, all the 28 polyps were benign. Nurse Freddie, what is a polyp? Okay. <laughs> so let me put my glasses on. So colorectal cancer is a disease in which the cells in the colon or rectum, they grow out of control. Sometimes it is called colon cancer. The colon cancer is the large intestine, you know, like or your large bowel. So the, that's the rectum where the passage is connected from the colon to the, to the anus. That's, mm -hmm. you know. So what is polyps? That's your question. Mm -hmm. So polyps, it is abnormal cells. So, they, so those growth, they're abnormal. So there, uh, there are actually little growths in yes. your colon? Mm -hmm. Little pieces of tissue yes. in the colon yeah. that and are they cancerous? Yes, and they would go and remove them. Okay. So that's the good thing. They remove the polyps before they become cancerous. But if we do not have the test done, they're not gonna know you have any polyps. Right. Like the patient in question that I said, 28 polyps? I mean, I'm laughing, I'm not laughing at the patient. I'm a very jovial person. I like, I love life, I love to laugh, you know? But when he said that to me, I was like, 28? I said, if you were in Haiti, you'd be dead. Mm -hmm. You know, and he looks at me, he's like, oh, well, I'm not in Haiti, thank God. But I made a joke about it, but it was not a joke. That's life. So imagine if he didn't have the test done, so he would not know that he had 20, 28, 28. So they didn't go and remove all of them at once, because that would be too much for that surgeon. But they eventually, they removed them all, and they were not cancer. But now they follow him. They continue to follow him, to monitor him, to make sure that either they don't come back, mm -hmm. you know, so then they're not cancer. So you can have a polyp in your colon, rectal and area, can, yes. and it not be cancerous, but they want to get them out of there. Yes. Very good. So again, the American Cancer Society reported that 20% of colorectal cancer diagnosed in 2019, people were under 55. Wow. So that's the reason, as we speak right now, the, they changed um, the, the requirement for, to be tested. Now, we all remember the movie Taekwondo. Taekwondo? 
So the the the, uh, the actor uh, Chadwick Bose Boseman. Oh. Yeah, what was that movie again? Black, Black Panther. Panther. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, son. Black Panther. Mm -hmm. So the young actor. Uh, he Chadwick Bo Boseman. Cha yeah, uh, yeah. I have his name here. Yeah. Chadwick Boseman. Mm -hmm. He died on October 28, 2020. And he was only 43 years old. But he was diagnosed. He deal, when he had that, when he did, when he shoot that movie, he was dealing with, uh, with colon cancer. So if he died at 43 and he had cancer for four years, so 43 minus four. He was 39. He was 39. Wow. And I remember in 2020, First Lady Lisa, when he died, every television, colon cancer, colon cancer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but then he died, then, then nobody talk about it. Mm -hmm. So m colon cancer affected men and women because we all have colon, men and, men and women. So 39 years old, and he had it. Yeah. And he had no family history. And that's... Yeah. That and so the screening, when when do screenings? You said fifty. No, they change they it. They change it to what? Forty-five. To forty-five, but he still came under that. Yes, he still. That's a good question, first lady. He still came under it. However, we're not here to blame the dead. Right, right. If he had, if anybody had symptom. Remember the thirty-eight years old I talk about because he had symptom. He went to the doctor and they do the testing. Right. So you, the, the guidelines said they used to be 50, now they changed it to 45. However, if you 20 and then you have symptom, then you go to your doctor, they're going to do colonoscopy. They're going to do all the tests, that, all the necessary tests to find out, to make sure that you do not have colon cancer. That's good. So the tests to screen for colon cancer, the main test that we've heard so much about, and I have to admit, I've never had a colonoscopy. Never did. I know I'm wrong. I talk about other screenings, but I've never taken the time to do it. And it, my excuse, it's, it, it's really an excuse, it's not a reason, it's because you gotta drink that stuff and then you gotta to poop for hours. Yeah. Um, but Nurse Freddie was telling me there's a new test that can be done. Yes. Right? So I was telling First Lady, of course, we know about the FIT test. The uh, FIT we, test. That's called, it's, the FIT test is not new. The, I will talk about the new test. The okay. FIT test, it's called, it's, it's, it stands for fecal immunochemical test. Yes. Fecal, that's the F. Mm -hmm. The I is immunochemical, the T is test. Mm -hmm. However, uh, last week, that was, you know, we make breakthrough, and I said, we, the healthcare people, they talk about the blood test. Now, the insurance is not going to pay for it. I, I cannot give you more details about the blood test, but the blood test, they're doing it now. So it is very encouraging to talk to your physician about the blood test. Now, LabCorp already putting advertised for that test. So the blood test is a test for colon cancer. Cancer, yes. The FIT test, test is a stool. Is, is a stool sample. Yes. That's the one I was so, trying to get So the to. FIT test, it, but it's not new, but it's, okay. been, it's mm -hmm. been there. So I just the didn't know about it. It was new to me. <laughs> I apologize. So the FIT test, they sent to you. You know, like when you order something on Amazon, they send you a box. So they send you a box. It's from col color God, I'm not advertising anything for any company. So they send you the, um, the box, and then you poop, and then when you poop, I usually tell people, put a little something that can catch the poop, and then... Before it falls into the toilet. Yes. Yes. So you because don't you don't want to get, get it, it from out. the water. Right. So and you then want something to catch. It sounds gross, but we got to talk about stuff. So then you take... Right? Gotta so now well, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> we got to talk about poop if we're talking about colon cancer. So it doesn't sound nice, we're trying not to be gross, but so you put something in the toilet to catch it. Exactly. You said like a bowl or something like yes. that. Put it in there so it can catch the poop before it goes into the water, if you're gonna do this kind of test. And then it's good to take the poop two different places. You don't go one place, because you might have blood in this area, you don't have blood. So they encourage you to take the poop to different places and then 
you put it on the, like they have, it's like there's a cord and you put it and you close it very nicely and you put it in the box and then you call the number, you said, hey, my package, you don't say your poop, my package is ready to be picked up. Somebody would pick it up and if everything is positive, if it's negative, your doctor would still, some doctor would probably still call you and say, hey, um, Freddie, your test was negative. And then if uh, positive, then they would get a phone call and said, uh, we will need you to come into the office because we would like to discuss more testing. So I think I encourage everyone, if you don't want to go do a colonoscopy, because colonoscopy is very invasive, at least start, start with the yes. fit test. Yes, yes. Because, I mean, it's your poop. And then you can wear gloves, you know. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. I mean. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's Yeah, the excellent. fit test. I'm going to order one. Because yes. I don't want to do the cold. I just, I've been putting it off for years. Yeah. Even though I had cancer, I've been putting it off for years. You're not it. the only I've had, one. I've had the script several times, and I just didn't make myself do it. Lisa, you're going to do better. I'm going I'm to let you all know when I do it. Not the colonoscopy, the other part, the fit test. <laughs> I think it's important to, for us to talk about the symptom of uh, colon yes, cancer. Yes, please do. It's uh, any change in your bowel habits. Like if you know, if you used to go like once a week, um, once a day, and then suddenly you constipated, like you don't go maybe every, every three days, every four days, that means there's a change. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have blood in your stool, Diarrhea or diarrhea and constipation, they both a sign of uh, colon cancer. Or you hear people talking about, oh, I feel bloated. You know, mm -hmm. I feel so mm -hmm. bloated. Or then they talk about abdominal pain, aches, and that would not go away. And there we go again, the weight loss. Mm -hmm. If any weight loss because you're not taking any, just because you wake up, just you just start losing weight. That's not a good sign. You know, I know we all want to be skinny, but if you start losing weight because you, and you don't know why, that's right. not a good sign. Right. So that's good. those times, if try to remember them, like if you go every day, like if you have a good diet, you should go every day, at least maybe two. When times you say a you day. should go every day, mm -hmm. you should poop you sh every day. Yes, because okay. nature has to take care of nature. Right. Every time right. that goes in, Needs that to has come to out. come out. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, very important. I know we don't want to talk about poop, but as nurses, um, Nurse Honey knows, we, we can eat and I mean, I see poop and I'm cleaning poop, yeah. I'm eating because that's... My kids say that all the time. <laughs> Mom, you're always talking about poop, but it's important. It is it's very important. important. That for yes. you to get out. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if, if you're used to going every day and that changes mm -hmm. it to every three days or four days, um, you need to get checked out. But you shouldn't even get used to going every three or four days. You should go every day. And if you're not, then this is, don't mean you have colon cancer, but you should do um, something. Need, yeah, Get some help. I just, I, yes. I found out something recently, and so we're, since we're talking about poop. Um, anybody ever heard of the term squatty potty? Okay. Know what squatty potty is? No. If you have a hard time going to the bathroom, uh, there's, a, there's a thing called a squatty potty, but you put your feet on a stool when you're on the toilet, and it helps you go. Hmm. Okay. Proven effective. Wow. I'm not going to tell you by who. Yes. So you elevate your feet. Anybody ever heard of that? Elevate your feet some, and it makes, you, it, makes it easier for you to eliminate poop. Hmm. Back to colon cancer. Yes, because, um, and, uh, and then sometimes people say, um, Nurse Freddie, how do I know I have blood in my stool? Uh, I think it's important when you finish doing your business, before you flush, take a look. Okay. It's yours. Yes. <laughs> you own it, you know? It's very important. Take a look. I mean, if you eat spinach, you're going to see green carrots. If, if you, you drink know? beet juice, which I, somebody uh, gave me beet juice, Beaten pineapple yes. juice the other day. Very good. And it's very good mm -hmm. for you. But if you eat beet juice, guess what your poop is going to look like? Red or pink? Yes. But the poop, the blood in our poops, First Lady Lisa, is different. Yes. It is very different. Talk about that. Because um, 
you, I can eat all beets that I want, mm -hmm. you know, once you finish your bit, number two, I call, we call it number two, because that's what, you know, we happy as nurses. Did you, you have a bowel movement today? No, I'm like, oh, you cannot go home today because you must poop, very important. So the poop, the blood and the poop, uh, and our poop, sign of colon cancer is not the same as the beats because you're gonna see so it floats it's there yeah. and then you go you're gonna be like oh you you're gonna say pastor jerome like what is this I, uh -huh. i'm telling because you're gonna be so excited mm -hmm. if somebody else here there with you and a loved one somebody very mm -hmm. close you're gonna be like that looks a little different that is that is important it's important yes so change on our bowel movement mm -hmm. stool and our, and our um and our bowel movement the pain the back pain, the abdominal, how you feel bloated, or you look pregnant and you know you're not pregnant. Um, and then, um, you know, so, yeah, did I see them all? The poop, the, the blood, change in your bowel uh -huh, habits, the blood. the blood, and then the diarrhea and constipation. Mm -hmm. Very, very Get important. Get checked out. Get checked out. Get checked out. Yes. Wow. Well, but the good news is, Colon cancer is 90%. They have a 90% rate of survival. Rate of survival. Yeah, that is which great. Which is huge. That's yes. huge. I love to hear that. And that as we great. speak right now, in the United States of America, 70% uh, of people in America, they had their screening done. Either okay. they had a fit test done wow. or a colonoscopy, but it's not enough. Because if all rate of survival is 90%, 70 percent is not enough that's yeah that's we a want good it to though. be 90 percent yeah that's, really that's at least 90. that's excellent and again we live in a great state mm -hmm. our state representative lisa blunt Rochester, or senators mm -hmm. they haven't one bill about health care that come to their desk for them not to sign they always sign it again you know in dc and capitol hill the, the, we are by bipartisan but when we talk about health care it is a bipartisan it doesn't matter what your politics involvement but we have great people fighting for us in capitol hill well i well, just want to make sure that i mention that that's, that's, really that's very important is there anything else you want to share with the group before we open it up to questions on uh whether it's backing up to prostate cancer or colorectal cancer that you want to share before we open it up to questions from the audience? Don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait, because we live in a great country. We have the health care for us. Just utilize it. Or if you have, you know somebody, a friend or family member, sometimes people, all they need is a little bit of encouragement, because we're all f afraid. We're afraid of the unknown. Like again, a colonoscopy is very invasive, but the least you can do, you can have the fit test done. Have them send it to your home. You tell your doctor, your doctor would um, um, make the call, and then they send you the package home, and you, you just poop and send the poop, and then there we go. That's good. Thank you. That's good, thank you. So uh, from some takeaways for me is that you need to have, um, men need to have a PSA done annually and also a physical exam of the prostate done annually, yes. right? Um, just because you have an enlarged prostate doesn't mean you have prostate cancer, right? So if you're having some trouble urinating or erectile dysfunction, doesn't necessarily mean prostate cancer. It could mean an enlarged prostate or something like that. Um, listen to your wife is big on prostate cancer side um, because they may be noticing some things you're just you know, not uh, focused on. And then for colorectal cancer, uh, how often should you get a colonoscopy or the, the tests? The colonoscopy, it's every 10 years. Every you 10 have, years. If you have a colonoscopy, that's why they encourage people to do colonoscopy. Because if you have a colonoscopy done and it's fine, you have to, you, you're good again for another 10 years. That's However, good. If something, symptom come up and everything, we're not gonna wait for 10 years. So the fit test, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't check to see how often. I believe it's three, but I'm gonna be honest, I do not have the answer. But the colonoscopy is every 10 years. Very but that's good. why it's so important to make sure we have our, um, 
a physical done every year, and yeah. then your doctor address everything else. Right. Uh, for polyps, um, if, if you have a colonoscopy and they discover polyps, doesn't necessarily mean you have cancer, but they want to get those out. They don't want yes. them growing in there, right? Yes. Um, and colon cancer, we have a 90% survival rate. Yes. Outstanding. Yes. Outstanding. Well, thank you. Nurse Freddie, it was great having you with us today. Thank, Thank you, you for all you do for us. She also serves on our health care team. So we're just thankful to have medical professionals like that, like you, that we can even come up to, that you're a real person, you're touchable. You can you just, I just thank you for the wealth of knowledge that you were willing to share with us today. Let's give her a big hand. Thank you. Is there anybody in our audience, um, we're wrapping up, but if there's anybody in our audience that has a question, maybe you need clarification on something we discussed, uh, we're going to take a few minutes and, and take your questions at this time. So if you step up to the mic, that way the folks who are watching online can hear the question as well. And again, we're not giving medical advice. We're providing information. And if you have a, uh, you know, questions about your own personal uh, health issue, see your doctor about that. But if anybody has a general question, you can come up to the microphone at this time. Anybody? Okay, come on up to the mic. Hi, Nurse Freddie, and thank you. I, actually, I have two questions. Um, one is, if a person has um, blood in their stool, could that mean that maybe they had a hemorrhoid that burst? That's a good point. Now, if somebody know, if you know you have hemorrhoid, if someone knows they have hemorrhoid, and then they see uh, blood in the stool, the first thing they're going to do is just to check to see if the hemorrhoid is um, inflamed, like if it flares up, because a lot of time they're not, they just not, uh, they're not bleeding. So you, I'm sure that's important to check that because hemorrhoid can, cause, uh, hemorrhoid can cause bleeding in the stool. But they have internal hemorrhoids, they have external hemorrhoids. So stool, blood in the stool is not normal. Having hemorrhoid or not, it is important to check with your primary physician. So, so when you say blood in your stool, mm -hmm. it's in the stool. Yeah. I just got that when she just said mm -hmm. that. Yeah. It's not blood... You might, you might see some, of, but this is blood actually, you're referring yeah. to blood actually in the stool. Yes. In the poop. Yeah. And hemorrhoid, I have seen it with patient. When they have, the patient that has internal hemorrhoids, the blood, and when they poop, the blood is kind of like fresh blood. Does that make sense? It's fresh. The patient that has other issues, the blood, it's not really fresh. It's in the best way I can explain it, you, okay, let me explain it. You know, get a piece of bread. If you put blood in the bread, you see the blood in the bread. If you see blood around the blood, it, blood around the blood, more than likely it might be hemorrhoid because like I said, the internal, the, when they flares up. Again, it is important to check. Like if you don't know, like I know the difference, but. Most people may not know. You, you need to check your primary doctor. Does uh, that answer your I, question? It does. Did I hear you say that you can check a hemorrhoid yourself? Did you say that? So <laughs> if you have hemorrhoids, you know. Okay. <laughs> I know it's external a versus internal. Ex so the internal ones it, you won't see. You won't see them. But, but the external one, you do know. Well, you when got, you wipe yourself, we, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. It yeah. is like a little bit dumb. When, if you have hemorrhoids, when you ha wipe yourself, you know. And then if you go to your primary doctor once a year, they let you know you have hemorrhoids if you didn't know. Oh. Does that well, make sense? You, it you, does. It makes sense, If you wipe yes. yourself and you feel something there yeah. that you didn't feel before, then that's a hemorrhoid probably. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. And then I have another question. Yes. Um, for men with prostate cancer and they go through the treatment, it, um, what is it, uh, Radiation or radiation. Uh -huh. Does that prevent a man from? Uh, does it cause erectile dysfunction when they do radiation? 
I cannot answer that question. Oh. That will have to be your physician. Okay. Because I can't, I'm a registered nurse that's above my pay grade. That's not part of my scope. So you would have to, I know the answer, but you would need to talk to your primary, to your oncologist. Okay. Just curious. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you for your question. I hope this is general. Um, can an enlarged prostate cause uh, irregularity in bowel movement? Yes, it can. Mm -hmm. Okay. But even though we know that can happen, again, I'm still pressing and pushing we, you must, or whoever it is, must see the doctor. Because we do not want to sit there and assume. And that's what we do a lot as people. We just assume. Right. Uh, we can't assume. Does Thank that make you. sense? Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? <laughs> hey, Mommy. <laughs> Hi, son. So you did a great job. Uh, my son. first question, and you may have said this, I came a few minutes late, so I apologize. What are the statistics of someone being able to beat uh, prostate cancer when it's found? The statistic? Yeah. I know you talked about colon cancer. I think you said 90%. What's, what's the statistic for, for prostate? The survival rate? Survival rate, yes. Yeah, I have it right here. Give me a second. All right. So yeah. his question was, uh, she shared the statistics the statistic for survival from colon cancer as 90%, but he was asking the survival rate for those diagnosed with prostate cancer. So she's looking that up. She thinks she has it in her notes. Um, that's a good question. I'm thinking it's probably a lot lower. That's my son. Mm -hmm. My son asks questions. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, As she's looking that up, um, is there, are there any other yeah, questions? Any other questions? Come on, come up to the mic. So, I, what I have here, I have one in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer during their lifetime. And then it says six and 10 prostate cancer are diagnosed in men who are 65 or older. I don't have the statistic of the survival rate of prostate cancer. I will make sure I give it to, not only to you, to everyone. And we can share it next week. And then we can mm -hmm. share next week. Mm -hmm. Raymond? Hi. Um, I just recently had my um, PSA testing, and my, my urologist said that my numbers are so good that he didn't do the um, exam. I had it like two years ago, the exam. Uh -huh. So am I supposed to volunteer for that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so he said the, the, your PSA level was, not, was so good uh -huh. yeah, two years so, ago. No, no, I just, just had now. it. Just I had now. it. I got my results. I get, it, I get my um, test every year. Good. I'm so proud of but you. I had the, yes. <laughs> yes. But I had, the, uh, I had the exam like two years ago. Uh -huh. It was the last time when the doctor said, my urologist said, because my numbers are so good that I, I don't have to do it. So I, I'm not going to go in there and volunteer. Do what your doctor said. He said you so, have to do yeah, it. Yeah, you're good. And you okay. hear what he said? <laughs> First Lady Lisa, he didn't say my doctor. He said my urologist. Urologist, that's really Very good. Very important. Mm -hmm. So he didn't talk, you didn't say your primary doctor, your urologist. So if your urologist said your, your, prost uh, your level probably like in the 0 0.5 to 0 0.6, that's more than likely. That's what it is, Five. Yeah, so Excellent. you don't, you're good. Excellent. And then like, you're, yeah, I'm so proud of you. So your goal is to tell three men. You, mm -hmm. you need to tell three people to make sure they have their That's screening good. done. Yeah. Okay. That's Thank your you. job. Well, I, three, I, at least three people. I thank my wife, but she makes me go. Because <laughs> <laughs> you listen to your wife. Very good. So urologist. Yes. Uh, why don't you tell the folks what a urologist <laughs> is in case anybody doesn't know? You know, it's important to go to our primary doctor every year. So when you go to your primary doctor, that's your general doctor. So every part of our body, there is a specific doctor for that. So the urologist deal with the um, Urinary tract? Uh, prostate, you know, that's what they deal with. 
Urinary tract you, you stuff too? No, so if I'm, no, a urologist, as a woman, I'm not, we're not gonna see a urologist. Oh, really? The men will see a urologist. As women, we get, you see our OBGYN, okay. and OBGYN take care of everything for us. Okay. So the urologist is men, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else have any questions before we wrap up? You all find this helpful? Yes. Helpful? <laughs> well, again, Thank you so much for sharing so much with us today. Um, we really appreciate it. And thank you for serving here at Seeds of Greatness. Let's give her a big hand. Thanks to those of you who are uh, joining us online. We have one more topic that we're gonna discuss next week. So we hope you can join us and get your screenings done. Get your, go ahead and schedule those appointments. Get things done. If you wanna get that fit kit, find out where you can get it. And let's, let's live long and strong with nothing wrong. All right? Thank you for joining us today.